Hi loves, Reverend Joya here to help you live your best vibe. And today I want to talk about the 20 beliefs that are keeping you stuck and feeling unsafe and unrooted and ungrounded and unable to move forward in your life that are locked and stored and stuck in the root chakra. So fascinating how as I do this work, I often ask, am I doing the work or is this work doing me? Because everything that I'm going through and working on happens to always just align perfectly with like the lion's gate that's happening now. So let's dive or... into this topic. I had this experience, well, which I've shared many times on many videos about my issues I've struggled with, with addiction my whole life. And addiction is really getting stuck in an energetic pattern, an energetic loop that is giving you some sort of reward. And for me, it started when I was about eight years old and sneaking food. So I developed an eating disorder at a really young age in my life. And it was in essence, uh, both giving my power away and trying to have power at the same time. And I heard a quote recently that I really loved about um, addiction or self-sabotage, these energies of what we do to ourselves. And it said that we self-sabotage or we fall into addiction in a way to attempt to have control over the outcome because we can predict what the outcome is going to be it gives us this illusion of control when in reality, all we're controlling is how crappy we are feeling inside of ourself. We're creating this self-manifesting prophecy. And as I've been doing this work to heal deeper and deeper, my own addiction issues, uh, I think I'm on like day 65 now of zero alcohol and cutting, like stopping the binge eating, all of these things, these habits, these ways of coping that I have dealt with my whole life. And so now, as I'm about to step on a stage next week to compete in a speaking competition, I'm really coming out of the, of the visibility barrier, the cave I built for myself to hide inside of. And I'm really coming out and stepping into this um, true self-resurrection process. And as I'm going through this, of course, it's kicking up the dust of the ego. It's kicking up the energy of the ego, which does not want to die. These aspects of ourself are very real and they are um, gestalts of our true self. We could say that we've created and manifested to make them real. And the only reason that an addiction is an addiction is because you are the one wrestling with it, right? So when I was writing in my Magdalene pages this morning and journaling about this, she really gave me this image of being blindfolded and wrestling with this snake only to realize if you take the blindfold off, there is no snake. And it's just us being lost in the energy of the power and the beliefs that we've given to something else, to a substance, to learn to cope with and deal with the realities in our life without realizing, not seeing that we are the ones who are creating that reality. And that's what addiction is, is these blindfolds that keep us stuck. And as this week in Vocalumina, we're diving into our next pillar, which is now moving into the chakras and healing the chakra system. And of course, the first one is the root chakra, your sense of belonging, your sense of safety, your sense of stability, your sense of being able to manifest and create and make money, your sense of abundance, all of these um, community, your family, all of it is locked here in the root chakra. And so I know as I was going through these 20 beliefs that um, so many of these have been at operating in my life and your own life is the perfect path. It's the perfect stepping stones to your soul's growth. And so I know that the energy of the addiction energy that's being kicked up in my life right now is being made conscious. It's being brought up to the conscious level so that I can see it. And uh, the Magdalene Council also told me about um, consciousness when things arrive to the consciousness that there are there's thought consciousness. You can actually have a thought that's made conscious that wasn't conscious before. There's feeling consciousness. You can feel a feeling, have that those epiphanies that you didn't have before. And the third one is the impulse consciousness. 
of an action that's arising as a wave, as an impulse, as an urge. But all of those are levels of consciousness with which we can work with our own life. But we have to be able to have that spaciousness inside of us to be in realization, to be in awareness that this is the path, that this obstacle is the invitation. So as I was sitting with this urge arising from me, from my body. So first it arose as an urge and I could feel it. And I was like, oh, I really want a glass of champagne. And so I was just sitting with this feeling. I was at the airport and I was feeling and just sitting in it. And what does this urge feel like? And I was doing what in mindfulness you call surfing the urge, right? If you just be with the feeling of it and sit in it and breathe through it, you just let it pass. It will pass. But instead of passing, it was getting stronger and stronger. And I could notice it in my body as it, and it felt like a wave that was just coming over me. And then a thought popped in, a conscious thought popped in that said, why don't you just go ahead and have one? No one will know. And that thought, when I heard that thought, I got up and left where I was sitting. I went and did a complete state change because that thought scared me. It scared me because... This is knowing like that's the power of that addiction, that it's no one will know. I will know that is self-sabotage at its finest right there. That is self-sabotage 101 extraordinaire. Who's it harming? It's harming me and stepping out of my integrity into sneakiness, into secretness, into, into lying, that that is where shame grows and shame manifests. Shame manifests in darkness. Shame manifests in our secrets. Shame manifests in our shadows. And so we have to be the ones to stop creating those experiences, those inner feelings of shame, of regret, of resentment, of remorse, of um, humiliation, of betrayal, self-betrayal, right? We're not only betraying the people outside of us, but we're betraying our own self, we're betraying our higher self, our deep self, our spark of the divine that is rooted inside of us that is wanting to grow and express as us, through us, in us, as us, in our lifetime, in this body. But we have to be the ones to first create a safe space inside of our self for that light to grow. And as we're doing this work, of growing that light, of facing our shadows, of turning toward these things, know that the arising of those things is your opportunity to be in practice. That is the practice. Life meets you where you're at. And so for me to practice my integrity, to practice my self-trust, to practice that was for me to get up, to go find a little store, to buy a book, to go find a different corner, to just sit in. And I just sat and escaped into my book because I was at the airport and I wasn't at home. But the next day I had an opportunity to sit and journal and converse with that part of myself, the self-sabotage that is my ego arguing for my smallness. It is our ego, our protective mechanisms we've put in place to bury and hide our authentic self, to bury and hide our true self that we were not allowed to express or that we were judged for being. And being judged for being who you are is got to be one of the most painful experiences that a human being can go through. And I talk about that in my talk that I'm giving this week coming up. It's such a such an important key. But let's dive into these 20 belief systems and see if any of them resonate with you that are being made manifest. So this is the thing to know is that what you are believing to be true is what you are manifesting in your life, because this is the way we work as a creator being. We are always constantly creating. And in fact, I changed the name of my program, the Vibe Formula. It was the Vibe Formula Manifestation Program, but I'm like we're always manifesting. So it's really the Vibe Formula Authenticity Program because we want to learn to vibrate from our authentic self so that our creations begin to reflect that instead of a false belief system that we have built and put in place and keep operational for the illusion of control, for the protection of the self, for the projection of the self, and that we are self-validating our reality all the time. So let me dive into these 20 beliefs. The number one belief, and they're all associated with the root chakra. So this is our, our groundedness, our place of belonging, our sense of who we are, our I amness in the world is rooted right here. 
And the first one is, I don't belong here. I don't belong here. Feeling out of place and disconnected from your environment or your community. The second one is, I don't want to be here. A desire to escape current circumstances, often due to a sense of overwhelm or discomfort. The third one is, it's not safe to be here. A belief that our environment or the world at large is dangerous and threatening. It's not safe here. And this is an old wound. This is an old reincarnation wound. This is this is the witch wound. It's the priestess wound. It's the priest wound. It's the spiritual wound, where at one time in past lives, it was not safe to be here because we were murdered for our beliefs. I'm not wanted here is number four. I'm not wanted here, feeling unaccepted or rejected by others, leading to a sense of isolation. This was a strong one for me as a child. I'm not wanted here. And I was told I wasn't wanted. So that really reinforced that I'm not wanted. I'm not valued. Number five, belief that your presence and contributions are unappreciated or ignored. I'm not valued. Number six, I'm not good enough. Persistent feelings of inadequacy and self-doubt about your ability and your worth. Number seven, I'm not loved. Feeling unloved or unlovable, often stemming from emotional wounds. And this was another really powerful one for me. I'm not loved. Number eight, I don't deserve to be here. A belief that you're unworthy of existence or taking up space. I don't deserve to be here. Number nine, I am alone in the world, a pervasive pervasive sense of loneliness and disconnection from others. Number 10, I'm not worthy of happiness or success. Belief that you don't deserve positive outcomes or fulfillment in life. Number 11, I'm disconnected from my body, feeling estranged from your physical self due to trauma or neglect. And this one was a very strong one for me. And I remember when I left my body at the age of three, And I did not come back into my body until a few years ago when the question dropped in, which I also share in my talk, which by the way, I will post my talk next week after I do it and hopefully win my place on the main stage on Saturday to share this message. But this disconnection from the body, when I I was really disconnected from my body. I could not feel inside of my body. And when I popped back into my body, it was doing during a really powerful sound movement and breath work um, process that I was going through. And I really literally felt this missing piece of myself come back into my body and come home to my body. And that's where awakening happens. That's where our ascension happens is right here inside of ourself. Number 12, I cannot trust anyone. A deep-seated mistrust of others stemming from past betrayals and lack of support. Number 13, I must always be on guard. Hypervigilance and a constant state of alertness due to past threats and danger. Number 14, I am powerless. I don't have any control over life and my circumstances. Number 15, the world is a dangerous place. A belief that the whole world is inherently unsafe. Number 16, I have to do everything on my own. A sense of isolation and the belief that one cannot rely on others for support. Martyrdom. Number 17, I don't have enough money, resources, etc. Scarcity mindset. Feeling that basic needs and resources are insufficient. Number 18, I have to prove my worth. Constantly seeking validation and trying to demonstrate your value to others. Number 19, I'm stuck feeling trapped in circumstances with no way out. And number 20, I can't be myself. Believing that one's true self is not acceptable or safe to express. So of course we can work with affirmations to uh, change these beliefs. Obviously we have the belief of I am stuck. The affirmation to come out of that is I am flowing. And we don't want to say I'm unstuck because the brain doesn't hear negatives. It only hears the point. And so we... We, we can't say like, um, you know, that's like to say that when you want something really bad, you're implying you don't already have it. So you want to move from want to gratitude and being in abundance and knowing that what you, what you're desiring, what you're creating is coming to fruition, which is a totally different energy than want. So when we're feeling these feelings or we have these beliefs, I don't belong here. We feel displaced and disconnected. 
from our community, well, what do we do? If this is our unconscious belief, I don't belong here. And I go and I show up somewhere. I'm going to show up like I don't belong here. I'm going to put out that vibration of I don't belong here. Other people are going to pick up that vibration. She doesn't belong here. And they're going to treat you like you don't belong here, but also because you're not being warm and you're not belonging. You're not fitting in the belief. I don't want to be here, right? What are we manifesting when we say, I don't want to be here? We can manifest procrastination. We can manifest not getting anything done. We can manifest complete escapism. It's not safe to be here. We might put ourselves in, in dangerous situations or attract dangerous people because we believe that it's not safe. So you can see how these beliefs are attracting um, the opportunities to heal these beliefs because the seed of it, the intelligence of it is locked inside of it. So the I'm not worthy of happiness or success is I am worthy of happiness and success. But if you believe you're not worthy of happiness or success, you're going to sabotage your opportunities for happiness and success. So when with the addiction aspect of things, right? So I can look through mine and feel like, okay, I'm self-sabotaging. Why am I self-sabotaging? What is self-sabotage? What am I getting out of self-sabotage? And it's the powerlessness. I don't have any control over life and its circumstances. And because I am powerless, I'm going to give my power now to this substance, whether it's shopping, whether it's a porn addiction, whether it's food, whether it's alcohol or drugs or being on a screen all the time. There's all different kinds of addictions but they're all doing the same thing. They're taking away your power and they're taking away your freedom because freedom is the complete opposite of an addiction. And so when we believe these things, we have these deep rooted beliefs. We really want to do the work to clear these beliefs out of our system. And that's the work that I do through, um, but in body dance process, which you can join me online for a class doing an embody dance process, or of course in Vocalumina that we're going through and we're really working through these deep issues. And so I know that that really kicked up both because I have something big going on in my life and that I'm working through this stuff um, with Vocalumina and creating these practices. I'm also doing this work. And so of course it's kicking up the stuff that's still there. And I am still in the middle of my resurrection of my true self. I'm not fully um, aligned and on board and downloaded into my body yet, but I'm getting there. And it comes with making these step-by-step -step choices that as these arise, I say, no, I say no to the small self. And I choose to be in alignment with my deep self. And so all of this comes from, you know, we're able to do this easier when we can keep our nervous system calm. And that is the work of sound healing, the work of humming, the work of using your voice, the work of breath. And the breath, when we're breathing, we really want to breathe, when we're doing conscious breath, we want to be aware that we are breathing in the source. We're breathing in source energy. We're breathing in the divine that we are that close one breath away as we inhale. And then as we exhale, we're sending the vibration of who we are back out into the field. So this conscious breathing practice is really powerful. And it's one of the best ways that you can go in to calm down your nervous system when you are feeling those eruptions of urges, whether they come in the form of a thought whether they come in the form of a feeling or the form of that urge, that wave that arises that just drives you into mindless action. So the first thing that you can do is just to take five breaths in for the count of five or six breaths in for the count of five and exhaling for the count of five. And you do that six times and that's one minute of conscious breathing. And the way that that looks is you simply count to five as you're inhaling Exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. Exhale through the mouth. 
And with each breath, when you're breathing, as you're inhaling, you're consciously inhaling. And as you're exhaling, you are mentally scanning your body and relaxing your body, relaxing your shoulders, relaxing your face, relaxing any areas of tension that you notice inside of your body. So you do that at the same time. So let's do it two more times noticing areas of your body that have tension and letting those drop. So you might've saw me just drop my shoulders as I was doing that practice. So let's do it again, inhaling for five, exhaling and dropping what's tense. Scan the body quickly for areas of tension. One more time. Exhaling. And when you finish that practice, just let yourself sit in silence for like 15 seconds. It's really powerful. The other practice that you can do to calm down the vagus nerve, to calm down the body, to calm down your nervous system is to hum. And I like to set an alarm. I'll do it for three minutes. So three minutes I have found is the perfect amount of time to completely distract me and change my state vibrationally through humming or toning. So for humming, you would just take a deep breath in and I don't know what that tune is. I just made it up. So you can always just let your um, you can hum a song, you can hum, hum one note, or you could just see what drops in like I just did and let it feel in your body where it feels and how it feels in your body. And that felt really good in my, in my body. That felt like, um, like a hopeful hum song. And so the third method is toning. And I don't have my uh, tone generator here, so I'll have to go get it. But the tone for the root chakra is 396 hertz. So let me just find it on YouTube. So you can find these on YouTube and I'm just going to type in 396 Hertz pure tone. So you don't get a song. And what this is said to do is to liberate guilt and fear. So it's liberating that from your body. Okay. Here's the tone. Turn on my sound. Okay. So here's this pure tone. You can hear it. And then you do that sound with your voice for one minute, releasing limiting beliefs, fear, guilt, shame, lack, scarcity, worthiness, all of those beliefs, all of those issues. And I like to ask for my deep self to give me guidance to clear these things out of my body, out of my system. saying a mantra over and over in my head and it's a simple uh meta prayer that i learned from mindful self-compassion training and it's just may i be free may i be love may i be worthy because you already are you already are free you already are loved you already are worthy you already are all of those things and so we are removing the obstacles that are in the way that we've set up in agreement with what other people told us, what other people taught us. And knowing that those things are not true. These are things that we've taken in to our own self to create the illusion of control for an uncontrollable reality or beliefs that we've adopted that we believe to be true from other people about our worth, about who we are in the world. And so the prayer is always a restoration, a resurrection, a reclamation of our true self that we have buried and hidden inside of ourselves, and we've kept it protected. 
and we protect it with our belief systems. So this is the work. This is the, when I say to people, we got to do the work. This is the work is we're removing those obstacles that we've created to our true self. And those obstacles definitely can be stored grief, stored anger, stored helplessness, stored rage, stored feelings of being unloved. And these feelings are not fun to deal with. And so the importance is as you're doing these works and you're doing the breath to calm the nervous system, and you're doing sound to sound it out of your body, that you don't tell yourself a story about it. As you do the work to loosen up and these these things come arising to the consciousness for you to see, to be aware of, know that they're there so that you can forgive them. You can forgive others. You can accept them. You can accept yourself. You can forgive yourself. You can love this part of you too, because it's all about reclaiming all of these bits and pieces and those shadow selves, these belief systems that we've created, these addictions that we've created, these power structures that we've given our power to are not real. They do not exist because when you cease to exist, the importance and the uh, value that's being placed on that in that particular way ceases to exist. So that's how you know it is not real. It is only real in your reality and you are the creator of your reality. So you have the power to absolutely go in there and uproot these beliefs like they're weeds, get rid of them and implant new beliefs. And the only belief that you need to implant is that you are divine and that you are loved, that you are created in the image and likeness of the mother, father, source creator, that you are the child of the mother, father, source creator. You are the third aspect of that trinity. You are the son, you are the daughter, you are the emanation of that divine spark, and you have free will to create the life that you will to create when we get ourselves off of autopilot, when we get ourselves out of the scripts and the agreements that we ourselves have made to be true, and then we protect them through our energy. So this is the work, this is the invitation, and the first step is to create that spatial awareness between stimulus and response. And Dr. Uh, or Victor Frankel said it so beautifully when he said in between stimulus and response, there is choice. And that's where your power lies is in that choice. And so it's really a matter of choosing in alignment with your higher self, choosing in alignment with a big vision that you have for your life, choosing in alignment to be the divine spark of source creator that you are choosing in alignment to be the light of the world. That's the work. And as always, I invite you to join Vocalumina at school.com forward slash Vocalumina. We're just now diving into the chakras, but you'll start from the beginning because it is a structured system to first cultivate that awareness so that as we go into this work now and you start kicking these things up, you're able to see it so that you can free yourself from it. So you can join anytime and hop into the community. And of course, there's also meditations and classes coming up on my website, vibology.com. And you can come to any class and I would love to see you there as well, that where we dive in and do this work too. So to free ourselves and we got to free ourselves to be ourselves. All right, my loves, I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. <laughs>